calls and a draw lots happened down in Atlanta this weekend as the Philadelphia Union are still undefeated though happy Monday welcome to PHOY Union podcast we've got Tyler Zuli, JP Sabata myself Renee Washington breaking down all the chaos that happened this weekend with the Philadelphia Union and their draw against Atlanta United but also just recapping some of the other news that's happening around the team and around the league JP uh, now that we've had a whole night to sleep on the 2-2 comeback draw, the positive, of course, Union are still undefeated. How are you feeling on this Monday? I feel spicy. I feel spicy. extra spicy. Habanero spicy here. Oh. Because uh, it felt like we got a win last uh, on uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, there's, Renee, there's nothing better. And I mean nothing better than waking up to some Atlanta tears. As obviously, listen, there was some controversy. That's typical Atlanta United and Philadelphia Union stuff. But we were in the right for this one. Mm. And so, listen, the fan in me will always enjoy these type of moments with Atlanta. Because when you're a young club like Atlanta have had success, like they have had, then obviously some spoiledness is going to come out. And that's what we have seen. But no, it was, it was a great time yesterday. A big point. And more importantly, as much as we've killed this team, Renee... <laughs> The last unbeaten team in the league, and we get to celebrate that. Ah, uh, yeah. I will say Atlanta fans are very consistent, whether <laughs> it's soccer or baseball or basketball. It doesn't mm. matter. They're going to whine and That's complain. Right. Uh, yep, definitely have had our fair share of issues with Atlanta fans whining and complaining about controversial calls and things not being fair and this, that, and the third. That is something we are sadly used to here um, in Philly <laughs> because they just can't handle the heat. Can't take the heat. Get out the kitchen. They can't handle the heat that the union or that Philly sports in general, I should say, bring. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go as far as to say I'm happy they at least tied. Granted, being down 2-0, yes, I am happy they at least tied. But they shouldn't have got there in the first place. And we're going to talk about that today. Do, do, do. All right, so <laughs> let's break down the action that happened. So as it's we so know, fun. it was definitely a very chaotic game. Uh, the union started off with a different, little different formation, uh, a different lineup, I should say, in bringing out Quinn Sullivan up top with Julian Carranza. And then in the midfield, Ali Bedoya getting the start. I actually enjoyed seeing them switch it up a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikel Ua coming off the bench. Birthday boy Jesus Bueno. Got to give him a shout out as well. Jeremy Raffanello. They just celebrated a birthday. Jesus is today. Jeremy was yesterday. Yeah, love to see that. Love to see that. And so, you know, I was I was happy with the starting lineup. I was happy with the fact that we saw Jim tweak some things because we talked about it. Quinn Sullivan's playing very well. I think he does a much better job, in my opinion, in the midfield mm -hmm. because it, I think it just gives him the freedom and the space to do what he does best. Let him cook. Let him go. <laughs> but I do also think he's just playing better in general than uh, Mikel Ua was up top. So I was fine with that. I thought, you know, roll out something different. So for the union to go down 2-0 with that early goal they gave up in the, um, you know, early goals in the second half, it's like, holy crap, here we go again. What's happening? Is this, is this it? Is the, is the undefeated streak over? Um, but then to, to crawl back, Ua off the bench, comes in, beautiful, beautiful uh, finish. Kai Wagner, incredible first-time finish off of the controversial throw-in by Nate Harrio. And then Ua again with what could have and should have been the game-winning goal that got called back offside. Another beautiful finish. I was encouraged, actually, by the offense. To me, it was the defense that was the struggle. Yeah, ironically enough, right? Because we're typically yep. sitting here praising the defense while we're expecting more from the offense. But, no, I mean, like, Renee, like, obviously, it's great to see them stay unbeaten. It's great to see, listen, there's... No questioning the heart that this union team has. Another come from behind game where they still get at least a point, and that's huge. But I have to sit here and think like, Renee, Atlanta was missing a lot of key pieces as we discussed with AJ last week in our mm -hmm. preview show. 
But it, what if they weren't missing some of these key? What if they had Yakumukas in there? What if they right. had Silva in there? What if Almada was in full season form? Obviously, he's not there just yet. But those things did creep in my mind because, look, I, I really felt like yesterday should have been a win. And obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not even discussing the controversies, which we'll get to in a little bit. But overall, in the run of play, I felt like yesterday should have been three points. And so, look, you take the point, And obviously, playing on the road is extremely tough. Playing in Mercedes-Benz sure. Stadium is extremely tough as well, even though they didn't have 70,000. But <laughs> it is still tough playing down there. So you are happy to get the point. But we still have a, some work to do here. Uh, obviously, as the months get warmer here, which, by the way, beautiful weather here in the Philadelphia area. Finally. So once it gets warmer, Renee, those the the attack always it, it's it's like clockwork. They always spring into action there. So Subaru Park, it'll be the home for us. A lot of goals, I truly believe that. But yeah, you're happy to walk away with a point on Sunday. Yeah. Um. Gosh, where do we start? I guess we can look at first Andre Blake. That was one of the first yeah, uh, well changes. And welcome and you guys. Hit that thumbs up button as you're coming in. Join the conversation. Let us know your thoughts on the Union's 2-2 draw. Come back draw. Yeah. Down 2-0. But should they have been there in the first place? Um, Andre Blake off the field. Um, that injury was just like a really odd, awkward play. I guess he stepped funny or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the question about Andre Blake is, can he stay healthy? And this That's is something, crazy. ironically enough, we we have talked, and maybe we've all jinxed him because how many times have us or various you know outlets that have covered that cover the union talked about the fact that he is durable, he is healthy, and thank goodness because he's one of the best goalies in the league, and you know they haven't had a great backup goalie. That's right. And so coming into the season, it was like, oh, you know what, you've got Andre. You can always rely on Andre. He's going to be back there. If nothing else, you know you're gonna you're gonna have Andre Blake. Oliver Zenla comes in. He's been playing very well. Thankfully, they brought him in because I know I saw different people like, gosh, can you imagine if Oliver Zenla was not mm-hmm. on the team? He's been able to step in and be very steady. But Andre just continues to pick up Knox. And I feel as though, I mean, he is at a point in his life. He's played a lot of yeah. soccer. There's been a lot of pressure on him. Oh, he yeah. is 33 years old, which for athletes is you're over the hill. Uh, and also the fact that he's between everything with, with playing with Jamaica, with the union, a lot is on Andre Blake yep. and a lot of pressures on him. Like not only is he playing in these games, he's getting tested in these games. There's rarely a time that Andre's out there and it's an easy game. Mm-hmm. You know, he's having to make major saves. He's having to keep the, the, the game scoreless or keep the team in it. So he's really being asked to step up in a, in a big spot all the time. And I think it's wearing on him. And listen, thank goodness for Oliver Zemla. That's all I can say, because now it gives you the opportunity. It takes the pressure off of Andre for once. Yeah, I would love to see him get some rest. I know we talked about it before the show. Get some rest. Get feeling better, because cl- clearly he's dealing with something. And what always makes me nervous, when a player just continues to get injured over and over again, and you keep rushing them back, it usually, and knock on all the wood, it sometimes ends up being a, a season-ending injury as a result. So like what I've seen, especially in soccer, Achilles, knees, like those types of ligament in- injuries typically come after somebody's had these random small injuries here and there, but they never fully were able to recover. And now the wear that you're putting on your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments causes one to pop. Yeah. So I would love for them. Give him time. Like they don't have a game this week, fortunately. Yeah. Uh, they don't they don't play again until April 27th against Real Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. Take this time, maybe even take that week as well. Let him just recover, heal, because you don't want it to become something that's more serious. Yeah. Yeah, no. And then so what I saw from the press conference was it was the same nagging injury that he had in the past with that groin right. quad injury that uh. sports hernia. So that's always tough, too, especially when you're talking about a recurrent injury that he's had before. I'm with you. Like, And, and the thing is, I, I know people, I did see some tweets like, what's the fitness staff doing? What are we doing with oh, our brother. players here? Like. Listen, you're talking about an older player. He's in his 30s now. Like, this isn't the same young spry Andre Blake well, that we all... Well, 30, it does hit different. Oh, it's, you're telling me, Renee. <laughs> I've been on the side of 30. I'm, I'm a little feeling longer it now. You, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, I mean, this guy has played a lot of monumental soccer, not only for club, but for his nation as well. And things certainly do catch up. And if you're the union, this is one of the biggest positives. Oliver Zemla has stepped up in a huge way. And every single match he's out there you see a little bit more from him that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. And what we discussed too is that one thing I don't want to see is like, okay, 
game time decision for Andre. You put him out yeah. there and then you got to pull him, pull him back out. That's what you don't want to do because you don't want to bring in a cold goalie off the bench to go out there and, and yep. play for, what was it, 45 some minutes on, on Sunday there. That's what you don't want to do. Oliver has shown us just enough here that he deserves to get this, the keys to the net here until Andre is 100% healthy. Because let's also keep in mind, Jamaica will be competing in Copa America this, this yeah. upcoming summer. Yeah. We have about uh, almost two months until that tournament starts. So let's rest him up. Let's get him right. And Oliver, it's, I, I, here, here are the keys. You show <laughs> us what you got here, my friend. Yeah, I just think it's time. Like, this is... You got to listen to your body at, at one point. And because you have an Oliver Zemla, you don't have to force it. And I still wouldn't want to force key. it if it's like a Joe Bendick or, you know, anybody else. Um, but you had the luxury of having a backup goalie. We got a chance to chat with Oliver Zemla yeah. at the Philadelphia Union's Legends of Soccer Gala, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about as well. <laughs> and listen, he's he's. He's got great size. He seems like he's very, he's ready for the challenge. He's been playing well. His hands are good. His reaction time is good. Like he's shown you enough that in this situation, I don't think he's ready to be an everyday starter for a team, but I do think he is that quality backup that you can now allow Andre Blake take some time to get better. You know, you've got, as we talked about that, the break here, the April 27th game, you have another game a week later against DC United. That is the beauty about where the union are right now, schedule wise, that they do have a week between league games. Take that time and just rest and recover. No rush. Yeah, that, that's completely <laughs> where I'm at. And I mean, listen, Oliver's played in, listen, I know it's USL, <laughs> but Oliver's played in some big games. You need some write it for Renee over here. <laughs> Allergies. Yeah, listen, guys, it's it's coming around here. But with Oliver, like he's played in some monumental games, and granted, it's USL with Louisville, but those are still important games. Those are just like some playoff oh, yeah. situations that he was in. That's what makes me feel super comfortable with him. And look, obviously, the back line wasn't the best on Sunday, but they've played a lot better. Uh, we got to give our, our our roses to Damian Lowe. He did look really good. We'll talk about glasses in a little bit, but mm -hmm. you know, it does. It, he's shown us just enough that he can give us a couple good starts and listen, it's going to be valuable minutes. That he's going to be getting if he gets us a good amount of starts here in place of Andre Blake. Yeah. We do have to talk about the defense because uh, we got to get into what we saw the contributions on both ends of the pitch from the defense actually, and just how they played. But you know, um, this time of year, JP, it is allergy season and I don't even have allergies to be honest until now. Like I just <laughs> started developing allergies and I didn't know I had allergies, but I had the symptoms I had, the itchy, well, my eyes have definitely been watering, itchy throat, sneezing, nasal congestion, which you could possibly hear, to be honest. Uh, nose has been a little bit more runny, not to be TMI, but you know all the symptoms of allergies, headaches, you know, dealing with the dark circles under your eyes. It's a mess. Tis the season. you got the pollen from the trees, the grass, the weeds. You've got the, just the change of seasons because it is a beautiful 80 degree day today means, oh, here comes allergies rolling in too. So if you're feeling sneezy, runny, itchy like myself, and you are dealing with any sort of allergies, uh, you know where you can go to feel better? Right over at Right Aid. The right answer to aid you in your allergies. Now, over at Right Aid, they have a lot of different options for you. Relief, listen to me. <laughs> Relief during allergy season. Uh, you can sign up for Right Aid Rewards email so that you can receive email alerts for your area. And with the pollen count so high, definitely try to stay indoors. Right Aid has a lot of different tips for you as well as Keeping your windows closed. I probably shouldn't open that window actually out there then. Now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you set yourself up, Renee. I set myself up. Okay. I need these tips. Run your air conditioners as needed. Remove your shoes and coats near your door when you come in and minimize tracking pollen inside your house. Showering before bedtime so you're not sleeping in pollen in your bed. That's gross. So over at Rite Aid, they've got a nasal rinse to help flush out your nasal passages. They've got some great medicine for you. And then also they want to make sure that you have all that you need to stay feeling good. So whether it's one or two weeks before pollen allergies are expected to be high, you can try out their nasal spray. It's like a, a um, nice, it's a nasal spray, a flow nase type of thing that really just helps you feel good. So in this time of year, when we're dealing with all the allergies, yes, we're excited to be in shorts and sandals and have an opportunity to get outside and enjoy the, the great weather and soak up the sun, but we don't want to soak up the allergies that come with it. So for relief at your local Rite Aid, talk to the pharmacist if you need to, get feeling good, and you can visit your local Rite Aid today. You can stock up on allergy relief and catch up on also your immunizations. Um, 
RSV, shingles, and more, all at Rite Aid. Walk in and schedule a vaccine appointment at RiteAid.com. I love my Rite Aid. I'm also like a Rite Aid Rewards member myself. So I get hey, my little, every go. time I get a little purchase there, it adds to my Rite Aid uh, rewards that I can get back. So check out Rite Aid. Can't go wrong there because it's the right choice. Absolutely. Cannot Ooh. go wrong with that. And also can't <laughs> go wrong with our dear sponsor and the Bet Parks app, ladies and gentlemen. This portion of the show is brought to you by the Bet Parks app. Get in the zone with Bet Parks Sportsbook app. Of course, guys, we obviously have the Stanley Cup playoffs coming up. We have the NBA playoffs coming up as well. We have the MLB and the MLS seasons in full swing. So why don't you guys check out some of your favorite lines? Maybe check out some of your favorite underdogs to bet on. You can win big with all-day action, win your first $10 bet, and earn up to $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win, and you bet bet parks. Download the app and play along with us today. Must be 21 or older. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Awesome stuff. All right. Well, there's somebody we've been taking a gamble on, and that's the back line with mm -hmm. the back, the center backs and the trio. Um, okay. Well, there's a positive. Damian Lowe did play well. I know I saw our buddy Todd Lewis who tweeted out about Damian Lowe's stats. Two blocks, an interception, five recovery's, three headed clearances. Damian Lowe, I feel like, has been the most steady of the three center backs. And I know Ironically at times enough. at times people may disagree with that, but I just feel like He's, he's got the speed. He's got he's reading the game well. He's anticipating well. And I think he's just playing very consistently. You know, the confidence, the leadership, the organization, it's there. So we saw him, of course, paired with Jacob Lesness. And both goals, in my opinion, I'm not saying they're all his fault because it's a team sport. I will never, you, unless... Even if you turn and kick the ball in your own goal, it is not, oh, it's not fully your fault. Mm -hmm. I know it's an extreme e example, but it requires in soccer, the ball has to get through all 11 players, yeah. quite literally. And so I'm not going to put it all on him, but your veteran, your leader, you know, you, the, your guy, your center back, you do expect, much like your goalie, your center back is one of those positions that is supposed to get you out of a bind. They're supposed to be the ones that when everything else is starting to break apart, they're going to step up and make a big play, get that clearance, you know, get that header, whatever it is. First goal, we'll start there. I think Jacob got caught ball watching a little bit. Mm -hmm. He gets out of position, body shapes off. He's trying to track back, was unable to do so. And that's how you see uh, Daniel Rios get goal number one. Jacob Glesson is just out of position. If he's where he's supposed to be, backpedaling, your shoulders are square. You're able to, he's got the height advantage. He's a great aerial presence. He's winning that one. It's going the other way. Mm -hmm. Or at, at the very least, able to shield enough that Daniel is unable to get that finish. And now maybe Oliver's can come up, Oliver can come off his line and, and scoop that up out of the air. So first goal, I did feel as though Jacob got caught. Caught flat, caught ball watching. I'll, I'll let you jump in on that one before I go into the second goal. Yeah, no. So first off with Daniel Rios... I can't explain this guy's career. So he's an eight. I'm looking at it right now. His market value is 800,000. Yeah. This man's got five career goals against the union. So <laughs> whoever, whoever needs a refresher here back two years ago, when we lost the supporter shield mm. in Charlotte, North Carolina, that ugly rainy hurricane was about to come. Daniel yeah. Rios <clears throat> has the match of his career scores four goals in that match for Charlotte gets sold to Chivas at Guadalajara. And now he's back in the MLS. I didn't even know he's with Atlanta. He's back <laughs> in the MLS, and he gets a goal that Jakob Glesner should absolutely not have allowed happen. Right. And so, like, Daniel Rios is one of those players where, like, I'm sure, like, it, the Phillies have, like, one of those players as well, like, who they go up against. It just, like, has a career oh, game. Oh, yeah. Daniel Rios is that guy, plays the union, and he has he has himself a game. Like, it, Does it's nothing until he plays wild. the union. <laughs> yeah, literally. So that goal, yes. Daniel Rios just caught Glesner uh, looking a little bit. And so that it was just unfortunate. Glazes, unfortunately, in the early parts of the years, had a couple of those goals. But uh, the thing with Glazes is that you trust him because the 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 work that he's put in as, in a union uniform, you know, playoff time. Not only is he going to give you great performance, he might give you a goal or two as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Well, then on the second goal specifically, um, the reason why I say Jacob is to blame a little bit is because that's a very broken play. It's a shot from distance. Yeah. You know, very heads up play. This is why you shoot. Shoot or shoot. Take your chance. Uh, Tiago Almada, excuse me, I'm sorry. 
Uh, Caleb Wiley gets in, yeah. gets a ball in a good spot, falls to his feet, miss clearance, which is the first issue because you, you got to make sure you're clearing that ball all the way out. Um, ball falls to the feet of Wiley, and you just saw as there was the final angle of the shot was what confirmed it for me. Because as I watched it, I was like, I actually think Jacob kind of messed it's it's glasses kind of messes up. Yeah. The angle of the shot literally goes, it's about 10 to 12 yards from Wiley to Glessness. He drills it on frame, beautifully hit. There's a great job placing it on frame. I will not knock Wiley for that. But in that play, as the back, you're you have to get your body behind that. Like Jacob Glessness has to make that block. You gotta save that because what's happening is as the ball is sliding across the field and falling to Caleb Wiley's feet and Oliver Zemla is sliding, he can't actually see the ball. Jacob Glesson is almost blocking him, which is why it was a heads-up play for Wiley to shoot it. Mm -hmm. He can't see it until it's past Glesson, and at that point, it had so much speed on it, it skids on the ground, and it's in. You don't have time to react as a keeper, and you don't have time to set your feet, even. So I think when I looked at that play, again, it was kind of one of those, like, just unfortunate plays, but I would have loved to see Jacob, you take it. It sailed by him. I was not obviously in Atlanta to know the exact distance, but I felt like he had enough time to react, slide, block, and now, you know, use your, you're the one that's making the save versus even getting on frame at all. So, again, I just felt like both goals were broken plays. You know, hats off to, for both Rios and Wiley, the heads-up play to finish it because it's not easy to score goals in a broken play either. But that's two, two chances where it felt like, gosh, the defense just got caught flat. The offense is playing well. Defense get, gets caught flat, and now you're down 2-0. Now you're trailing and you're crawling out of a hole. And so when you see the union be able to tie the game up and even have that third goal that gets called back, you wonder, this should have been how it was from the jump. Yeah. Don't give up those two goals. Or maybe only give up one, and you're able to come back, tie things up, and then take the lead versus trailing by two in the second half and having to score two late goals. Yeah, I, I mean, that's why we say, like, you know, it's great that they're finding ways to fight back yeah. and getting these points, but, like, those two goals should have happened, Renee. Like, yeah. the, the second, well, first off, the battle on that on that flank between Caleb Wiley and Ethan Harrell was a lot of fun because these are t- two kids that are trying to fight for yeah. U23 mo- uh, minutes here with the U.S. men's national team and, and the youth system that they got going on. And so you got two under 23 kids going at it. It was a lot of fun to watch. But, yes, the Caleb Wiley goal... What I saw was, look, Caleb had a window the size of the PHLY studios here. And so, like, (laughs) anyone should take that shot. And so, with a window that big, he took that shot. A shot that low should not be going in. Now, if it was, you know, this this crazy, like, Jakob Glezis goal from 21, I'd be like, all right, that was just a really good play. But no, Caleb Wiley's shot should have not even crossed the 18. Jakob Glezis, you, you got you got to stand you got to stand strong there. Unfortunately, in that to. type of moment, you got to at, listen. If it goes in, it goes in. But at least give yourself the shot. Give the goalkeeper a shot as well to make that save. But no, Caleb Wiley saw the ball, took his shot. Shooters are going to shoot right, and unfortunately, that knocked us down to nothing. But those are two plays right there yeah. that you could have you could have changed the trajectory of this game. It could have been a win. But those are just two defensive breakdowns. I I've seen those types of goals. Like the second one happened. The first one obviously happened a lot, but the second one happened where it's that's a miscommunication between keeper and center back, and you wonder had Andre been in goal if that goal happened. And the reason I say that is because the goalie can't see the ball. Like I said, so in this case, since Oliver can't see, he's not calling Jacob off. Like sometimes goals will say, let it, leave it. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll tell their back, like, leave it. I got it. And you'll see the back, you know, turn and let, let the ball go through. That was not the case. He shot it so fast. Oliver wasn't able, like I said, to even adjust. And that should have been like, stop, block it. You know, you should, you got to urge slide, get in front of it, something um, so it was just very unfortunate and it's a shame because it puts you in a situation you shouldn't have to be. And I know, uh, Tania, or if it's Tanya, actually, I think I'm gonna go with Tania. Welcome and nice to have What's you here. On? You're mentioning how that third goal not being allowed was a disgrace and the MLS needs to do a better job with their refs and VAR. And listen, I agree that there were some questionable issues. Obviously Atlanta is fussing because they feel like the throw in by Nate Harriel was illegal and it shouldn't have counted. That led to Kai Wagner's goal. On the other side, that third goal should have stay, stayed as a goal. Uh, lots and lots of controversy that we saw in this game, and we'll get into that in a moment. But I always go back to don't even leave it up to the referees. Like the Philadelphia Union had a chance. You had an injury bitten Atlanta team, as we talked about with AJ in our preview show, 
that went out later uh, last week, you had them. You had the upper hand. You're playing well. You had the better. You had great chances. Don't even allow them to be in a situation where now they're getting some help from the officials and getting that third call, that gr- third goal, excuse me, called back. So that was more my frustration about it of like, yes, lots of controversy, lots of chaos, but don't put yourself in that situation to begin with. That's a really good point because obviously like, you know, both fan bases right now are like kind of crawling, you know, killing each other about what happened on Sunday. But like, if you just, you know, handle your business, you don't allow those defensive miscues happen. It could have been a whole different story. And I guess the same could be said about Atlanta, which, you know, we talked about uh, Atlanta, obviously with a lot of pieces, a lot of key pieces that were missing. And yet they still had an opportunity here to get all three points there. So it definitely could have gone both ways, but Man, controversy never escapes this league, Renee. Never. Never, never, never. That's the thing. You want to go with, you want to make sure that you're setting yourselves up to minimize any chances of, you know, a controversial call, no call happening that now has you frustrated and has you wondering and and now angry again with VAR, angry again with referees. How many games have we seen now for the Philadelphia Union where there's been a goal? It's always a goal, obviously. A goal called or called back that we don't agree with. And you want to make sure you're always setting yourself up for success. And you know where you can set yourself up for success? That's with Olipop. It is the world's first functional soda with a classic soda taste and the benefits of plant-based fiber, prebiotics, and other botanical ingredients to support your gut health. Don't leave it up to chance. Two out of three Americans have issues where they're not getting the amount of fiber that they need, and they're dealing with digestive health issues. Don't be one of them. Over at Olipop, they are taking care of tackling that for you by providing you with a really healthy soda for you that also tastes really good. You don't have to drink healthy drinks that have an awful aftertaste or are not good because over at Olipop, as you can see over my shoulder here, they've got all these colorful different flavors and cans. Classic grape, strawberry vanilla, cream soda, cherry cola. They've got Dr. Goodwin, uh, root beer, the classic root beer, and the, you can also have fun with it. Maybe you want to have that classic root beer with some vanilla ice cream. Maybe you want to mix your cherry, uh, your lemon lime or your orange squeeze with some liquor and make a nice Ooh. mix drink out of it. You have got options. So over to Olipop, they have not only the prebiotics and plant-based fiber options as well. They also provide you two to five grams of sugar per can, nine grams of fiber per can, lots of healthy options for you to make sure you're taking care of your gut health. And the best part about it, you can find Olipop in lots of different places. 30,000 retailers nationwide online. You can shop for them on Amazon or on drinkolipop.com. And you can also now use the code PHLY20 to get 20% off your next Olipop order. That discount does only apply to one-time orders, not to subscriptions. And again, Olipop sold 30,000 different retailers. Wawa, which they recently just launched with. Sprouts, Target, Wegmans, ShopRite, GoPuff or online at Amazon or drinkolipop.com. So enjoy a nice, refreshing Olipop and get your gut health feeling good. Uh, that was perfect because you had the the, uh, you had the, the the fridge behind you. That was absolutely perfect there. <laughs> well, now that you guys are making smart decisions with your health, let's make some smart decisions with your finances, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen. That's where our sponsor today comes in, Truemark Financial Credit Union, ladies and gentlemen. When you join a credit union like Truemark Financial, you become a part owner which means profits are coming right back to you instead of going to shareholders. Better rates, lower fees, a better return on savings, and more flexible options with all the same digital tools and tech to make our lives easier. Truemark has local roots headquartered right here in Fort Washington and with 24 branches in the Philadelphia area. They serve our community and our people right here at home. Becoming a member of a credit union has so many benefits over being a customer at a bank it's a total no-brainer, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, head on over to truemark.com slash P-H-L-Y to learn more or to find a branch near you. That's truemark.com slash P-H-L-Y, federally insured by the NCUA. It's a smart move. Go Truemark, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right. Well, positives that we did get from the game yesterday, the union did come back. It was 2 nothing. They could have just folded like a lawn chair. Instead, they did work themselves back into the game. We saw Mikel Ua get the goal. That is his third MLS goal of the season. Kai Wagner notched his first of the season. Oh, boy. Are you excited? Well, uh, Renee. Is this your excited phase? I uh, I got shut up. I got shut up over the weekend by Ua. Ua. Do you feel like he shut you up? I mean, that goal was nice. Well, first off, Carranza set that up perfectly. Yeah. Right? 
But I mean, that, like, where was that? Where's that shot been, Ua? Like, that was a beautiful shot with mm -hmm. the left leg and knocked it in. Like, I, I, thought, I thought on Sunday he played really well when he came in. You think maybe that's a better role for him off the bench? That I'm not happy with. Um, but if I'm, I want goals. Like, if that's unfortunately the case that we're at with him, uh, that's unfortunately probably what's going to have to happen. But I need goals for him. Like, any which way it is, the man needs to put the ball in the back of the net. You don't want him doing it for 45 minutes. No. Mm -hmm. But also, let's keep in mind that plantar fasciitis is, is a real deal, especially in this sport. Um, but, yeah, he needs to put the ball in the back of the net. And that was a nice goal. And he could have had two. He could have. He, he should have. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I do think, definitely, if he's, for anybody that's dealing with a nagging injury, it's best to have them come off the bench. It's best to have them or or just be a starter that plays less because that's the other thing. Some some players, it's hard to you warm up, you stop and you're and you're standing there. And even though you warm up again on the sideline, it's not the same and it's hard to get going again. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder if for Ua to come into the match at a time when for Atlanta in this situation, their backs are their their teams for the most part been out there the entire time. Yeah. Some people thrive best off the bench because it allows you to come in fresh while everybody else might have 60, 70 minutes, you know, under them. And then also I think it does allow you to be that spark that now the game's been able, you know, maybe you're now focusing on just, okay, I'm going into the 70 minute mark, for instance. I've got 20 minutes that I that I just have to focus on instead of a whole 90 minutes. Or I've got, um, I could see what they're doing. Like some players also need to see the other team. How are they going to line up? Where's the space I can get into? Kind of like visualize and see now when they go on the field, they can execute that. So I'm not saying that's Ua, but I, I do feel like you mentioned he did play well. He did play better on in the game versus Atlanta. And he showed exactly what you want from him. Coming right in, create, obviously scored a goal, scored a second goal that got called back creating chances, making good runs. What creates that goal that did stand was he did a good job staying on side and just drifting away from the defender. So now as everybody's watching Julian Kranza, there's Ua in a good spot that he can receive it and finish quickly. Um, and there's not much any defender can do at that point because yeah. he set himself up. So the movement and even just the poise and composure, because that was not an easy goal to finish. Yeah. Great composure to finish that one. And so I'm hoping maybe we're finally getting him much like, our buddy Danny turned the corner, has been playing much better. Um, Ua also is finally getting feeling better, and maybe less is more with him. Yeah, yeah, and, and like that's the thing. Like with Ua, everything off the ball he does really well. And you mentioned <laughs> right. you mentioned the goal. Like that's just a great run to you know, especially knowing that there was a reset going on and Caranza noticing that and just put it right on the spot there. But mm -hmm. for Ua, it's. Easier said than done, but it's <laughs> all about when we're in that final third and we need someone to score the ball, he has to be that guy. That's yeah. what we're paying him to do. Um, if it's for 45 minutes for now, let it be. Curious to see how that foot is holding up right now. Obviously, he's out there, which is great, but the ball has to go in the back of the net, especially for Uwa. And this attack is, is slowly f uh, finding its form. Obviously, there's a lot. I've, I've heard, a, especially after this game, a lot of rumbling still about Caranza and his future right. and what that holds. Yeah. But you have to feel very comfortable and confident with what's going on with Gazak, Ua. Let's also throw a coin in there as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, slowly it's coming together. It is still only April. Obviously, the union have been dealing with some, you know, nagging injuries from different players that they're still working yeah. through. And so overall, to get a point on the road in Atlanta, not easy. Uh, nobody else has really, nobody's been able to do that this season so far. Um, and Atlanta is a tough team to go up against because they are injury bitten, but they are still middle of the pack. Like you, you don't know what to expect from them. And so I'm excited that the union were able to at least, like we saw them take hits and bounce back. Yeah. You know, again, that's something that really is important. That's down the stretch of the season will we'll pay off that you know how to, if it doesn't matter if you're down. There are some teams that statistically only win if they score first oh. or only win if, the, you know, like those types of things you can't have be your your identity because you never know what's going to happen in the game. Yeah. So to have two second half goals you give up and you still are able to score and score quickly within yeah. minutes of each other to put yourself back in it and then again to possibly take the lead, like that fight – that resilience is is incredible, and it was encouraging to see. And then on to the controversy, starting with the second goal. 
Nate Harrell's throw in. Beautiful, beautiful right footed finish by Kai Wagner. In the right spot, able to finish the first time. Nothing you can do about that. But the throw in by Nate was controversial because he did step on the pitch. And you're actually not supposed to be able to do that. We actually, so Tyler, do you have that? Pic, you, so we actually have a picture. Um, so of course, in, the footage <laughs> right in the midst of us uh, going live. Someone sent me an even better picture. But so if you guys can see here in this picture, Nathan Harriel. So his heel is touching the foot. Now I'm gonna pull up. So gen, so shouts to at slits uh, underscore one forty. He he did put a he sent a comment under Thomas Gron, Gronmark's uh, tweet there. And in this picture, you can clearly tell that the heel is on that line. And that is the rule states you can do that. The heel can be on. Uh, Thomas did tweet out um, the rule there. So if he, said, he stated it, if it's on the line, on the point of release, it's legal. What happens after the release doesn't matter. And yes, you could transfer the energy over the line. So that's from the throw-in expert, as they call him. He actually helped us out here in Philly. Uh, with the with throw-ins with our team so he called it legal that's the only word that i really needed there uh so the controversy obviously it's very very close and maybe if if nate nate's foot is just a smidge mm -hmm. over we're, we're probably talking about a different outcome here but uh yeah it looks like it was a legal throw or not that's a thing like you can't fully step on the field you have to be touching part of the line which even i didn't even know was part of the rule um, but then on the other side, like his other foot is dragging. Cause that's the other thing that right. people sometimes get caught on of like, but you raise your foot. Once the ball's out of your hand, it doesn't matter. You can, I jokingly said this before the show, but you literally can throw it out of your hand and do a, a whole backflip if you wanted to. Like nothing else matters at that point. If the ball's out of your hands, it's, it's in, it's live. It's in the run of play. So he fully did the full extension, dragged the foot, stepped on the line with his heel, but I will say what's confusing about it is you don't see that often. Like, even I was like, what? Um, and thanks to the expert, the throwing expert, even Thomas I learned something Gronmark new. From I had no Sweden, idea. I, I had no idea. I thought you could, I remember here you can step on it with your toes, but I didn't know it could also be your heel. Like, any part of your foot can be on the line. Interesting. Learn something new every day. I would love to be a throwing expert. I would. How so do you like, get that job? I was going to say, like, what does question. one do? Like, I, are you being brought in to only yeah. break down the throw in? I, I mean, like, listen, Weird. everything in sports is so analytical. I mean, you, you know yeah. that covering the Phillies. And so, like, every, especially, like, the union, they're trying to find every which way to kind of find an edge out on the pitch. Mm -hmm. I don't know where this guy like, – so, obviously, he, he helped Liverpool first. So, I'm assuming he had to have gotten in with Jurgen Klopp at some point. And then, obviously, his – now now that you work with Klopp, one of the best managers in the world – he, Klopp is probably telling the whole world about it and Ernst, you know, that German connection. So that's probably where it all came from. But it is interesting. This man is known as the football throwing coach. He, it's right on his bio. Champions League and Premier League winner. <laughs> sold. So you probably I'm got a sold. ring from Liverpool with the Probably for being the throwing coach. That's, like what? That's awesome. I want to be like the water <laughs> bottle coach. At like, I'll be like the like water boy. I'll be that. Oh wow! Now we're now we have to create that meme, Tyler. <laughs> Renee, <laughs> Renee is the water boy. <laughs> I will be me. Um, but no, that was controversial. And then of course, between the two, <coughs> Nate's is clearly right, and not being biased. But the offside call, in my opinion, was clearly was wrong. But I, the hard part is that there's not enough to fully overturn the initial call on the field. They're not going to change the call. I just feel like Ua was in an offside position before the ball was played, but then worked back onside because he actually was behind the defender, worked back onside as the pass, as the ball was being played. And then, first of all, it was a beautiful play. Let's just all, let's just take that moment to just say like, wow, teamwork, yeah. combinations, finally. I've been saying I want to see more goals in the run of play, not just on set pieces where they're combining. And we saw that this weekend. So yay, small victory. But I do feel like he reestablished himself on side. And I know people were saying, was it his shoulder? Was it his arm? Was it a foot? He looked fully on side to me. Like I did the whole line across on my screen. He looked on side to me, but again, there wasn't enough to fully overturn it. So two, yeah. two. So, I mean, like the only <laughs> real thing, we also do have this picture here as well. The, only real thing that I would say 
is that shoulder. And I, and I know it's a little bit tough here to see, guys, but so it's right in the center of the pitch. You see Uwa's the lone union player, and then there's the Atlanta defender right in front of him. I mean, yeah, we could do the line all we want. I guess we can grab a ruler, Renee, but like the only thing is like the shoulder, but yeah, it's it's not conclusive to say. Uh, I, I thought it should have been let let go. It should have just allowed the goal to happen. Um, but this is this is unfortunately what we have to deal with. You know, obviously the refs have had some very controversial calls since coming back uh, from the from their lockout there, and this is again the Union getting bitten by that offsides. It's not as bad as the Cincinnati one where they didn't even Oof. go to it at all. But it, it's it's just rough to have a game, you know, kind of get determined by that. But uh, you know, I mean, you're not gonna sit here, you watch me, you know, bitch and complain online about it like Atlanta, but you know. <laughs> pow, pow, shots fired. It just is, it's wild. The union always find themselves in the midst of controversial VAR and calls by officials that are literally changing the outcome of the game. But I hope that what they're going to continue to preach is don't let it get to that point. Um, but overall, it was, it was, in my opinion, I feel like the original ruling on the field should have been a goal. Yeah. But the and then when you go to VAR, it stays a goal. Yeah, <laughs> literally. But of course, uh, Renee, we get the best moment of the press conference because of this offsides rule. Oh, so, yeah. Shout out to our buddy Jose Nunez, who did put this out there from the presser. So Jim goes, what does clear and obvious even mean? What's clear and obvious to me might not be the, not might not be to the next human. Millions of people watch Two and a Half Men, and I think it's the dumbest show ever. It's clear and obvious to me that it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was freaking awesome. The fact that Jim, well, obviously, Jim should be upset about that first off. Like, he should absolutely be upset, but for him to compare this moment to Two and a Half Men, a show that hasn't been on the airways in so long. Like, it, it's it's part of when Jim gets like, I want to say like he, like he doesn't visibly get angry, but you can tell when he's a little ticked off and he gives you like clever tidbits like this. I think back to the Portland game two years ago <laughs> where, you know, Julian Caranza should have not gotten that card. And, and he's like telling the ref, he's like, because you can't do your job. My guy has to mix the next game. Like he gives you like those little tidbits. But um, I, I'm going to say this. I, I actually I, don't kill me guys, but I actually did like two and a half. I don't know where, where, you, where you stand with it, Renee, but like I, I thought it was an okay show. I didn't think it was terrible. I didn't think it was great, partly because it was the only American show I could watch in Columbia when I was a kid, but uh, I thought it was a great moment. <laughs> First of all, Jim is hilarious. Um, again, best. somebody else that we, when we had a chance to go down to the gala and hang with the union and different donors and sponsors and media that was there um, and just catching up with Jim, like he is just Mr. Personality. He will always be down to earth, straight shooter, like, very genuine and so his little like one-line zingers are so on brand for him you know like i feel like it fits very well um listen the clear and obvious thing has been a clear and obvious issue for many coaches because it's the same ruling in all things american soccer nwsl mls i've heard so many coaches complain about this because what is clear and obvious that's like saying if i feel this then that's what it is like clear and obvious is not a you when you have a definition you need to actually define it. Like, I feel like it's so fluffy, like the legislature of the jargon and how they describe like how a call gets overturned or not, or if it stands is fluff. It's nonsense. It's BS and clear and obvious. No, we need facts. We're talking about goals here. You need to have an actual way of like determining whether or not it's going to be a goal versus just being like, if it's clear and obvious, it will not, unless it's clear and obvious, it will stand or whatever the mess it says. So I was, I felt him because I feel like in that moment, you're just so irritated. Yeah. You're just going to say whatever comes to mind. Now, when it comes to two and a half men, <laughs> men, 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 Tyler's ready to kill us, guys. <laughs> Here we go again. We're going to um, lose our money. <laughs> so I liked the show, but I didn't, it wasn't a show that I had to watch every episode. Yeah. I like I wasn't that. racing to the TV to watch it, but if it was on, because it was usually on around the afternoon. I'd watch it like as white noise almost in the background, but I just thought it was a very cringy with a lot of the comments and things that they, yeah. the way it evolved over the years kind of got really weird and their dynamics sure. and their like their relationships and stuff. And then like their characters were just, well, it was Charlie Sheen's controversial in his own. He right? is. Let's just call it for what it is. Charlie Sheen went too far. And then when I heard the stuff that was happening in his real life, I was like, this totally makes sense now because his character was just 
outrageous. Like it started off as a cool plot, the like bachelor uncle and like the recent divorcee with his son. And then they just ran it too far. The son got weird. His character got weird. And he actually got a little weird as he grew up. But then both the brothers, like Charlie Sheen's character and uh, I can't think of the brother's name. Alan. Alan. Alan, Alan, yeah. Alan even got weird. Then like, it was just too much. I think the show just went too long. So I'm kind of, I'm on the fence. Like it's not a show. Again, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm not going to like be waiting with bated breath. Like I was never excited. Like, oh, two and a half men's on. But it was literally that show, and I have like a, a group, a core group of shows I can I can think of off the top of my head that like if there's nothing else on, I will watch it. Yeah, I mean, Big for, Bang Theory is one of those for me, yeah. for sure. For me, it was all about so there was the Warner Channel in Columbia. I don't know if it's still there, but you know, I was you know I was a kid, a month away from the states. You know, I'm an, I'm, I'm an American kid. You know, living in a, in Columbia for a month essentially. Oh. And so like watching the Warner Channel, watching the Big Bang Theory, watching Friends, uh, watching Two and a Half Men, I, I it, like it helped me get a little bit closer. But like you said, as I got older, I'm like, all right, that show really wasn't that good. <laughs> like I, you know, young me, yeah. like what were you thinking? But <laughs> like, it is what it is. But yes, Jim definitely gave us a, an absolute great moment. And one more point on, on this VAR with all sides. Renee, how do we not have like more than like two or three camera angles? Like I feel that's like, the other issue. I feel like in like the other American sports or even mm-hmm. like in the Prem or like, you know, international games for World Cup qualifiers, there's like 12,000 different angles. And I feel like we have we're like limited to like two. Yep. So like obviously like it, it, it's clear and obvious it's not all sides because we don't have enough angles to determine that it is all sides. Like I was watching I was watching the Flyers like three weeks ago. There was an all sides uh-huh. call. They had like six different camera angles for a hockey arena. We can't even get more than three here for the MLS. So like, that's my my gripe with it. So we just need to we need to improve upon the VAR. It's great that we have it, but now it's time to take it to the next level. It is time. And honestly, that's been also my frustrating um, issue with soccer because you can have put a camera on like behind the goal, like put a cam- you have the camera on the side, you have the aerial view from up high. Um, you should be able to have camera people like cameras stationed all around. There's Absolutely. no reason why we should only get like two looks at each play. Um, to me, that's just it's 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 not okay. It's inexcusable at this yeah, point. Absolutely. In 2024, you can find a way. Um, so some other things, just a quick nugget of we actually information. We do have breaking a little bit of breaking, a little bit of breaking here. right now. Uh, so Kai Wagner, we just talked about. He just got named to the match day to all eleven. There, he's oh. the starting center back. Uh, you do have my boy Matty Freeze in there. Love oh you, Matty. man. Uh, Caleb Wiley did make that team. And then, of course, everyone's favorite, Messi, was on that list as everyone's well. Everyone's favorite is hilarious. But Kai Wagner, congrats, brother. Woo-hoo! Making it to the all 11. I'm trying to see the bench out. Uh, no, 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 no. That's it. That's the only union play. Okay. Just uh, just Kai. Well, we'll take that. Kai yeah. Wagner on the uh, 11. best 11 Love for it. the week. Love that. Love that. Um, also, in that game with the start, Ali Bedoya did make some club history. Uh, he tied former... Union player Ray Gaddis for the second highest number of starts in club history. And they are behind none other than one and only Andre Blake. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So uh, Andre and Ali Bedoya, as we talk about, uh, a lot of miles on the tank. Andre Blake still sits at that top spot for the number of starts in club history for the Philadelphia Union. So around the league, we saw some great, some interesting games. Of course, the Union still sitting in the top of the East with that draw, the only undefeated team across the league, which in itself is very exciting to be seven games in and be the only team that's still undefeated. Um, as you talk about with Messi and Miami still sits at the top spot in the Eastern conference. Whereas on the other side, it's LA galaxy. That's still uh, sitting top of this table at the table. Mm-hmm. And it's been kind of wild to see the way that the MLS has been unfolding this season. Some surprises we've seen, some really good breakout, I feel like, starts the season for some guys, the LA Galaxy being one of them. Um, but yeah, we're now we're starting to get a good sense, I feel like, of what the MLS picture is and where teams really stack up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's surprise. So like the Eastern Conference, I guess I'm not too surprised. Um, we'll see how the Red Bull hold up, but obviously I did think the Red Bull improved upon in the all season. So yeah. I think like the top five really does not surprise me at all. And we'll see how uh, the Miami's depth comes in the yeah. in the play. Some some other competitions come, but I mean Vancouver going on a tear right now, second place in the West. That's the big surprise. It's one of those teams that. 
you know, they put together some solid teams, but obviously a little bit on the boat of the <laughs> union where they're, they, you know, they're tr trying to make some profits here too, but cool to see them out there in, 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 uh, in the West side of Canada up in second place. So we'll, we'll see how these, these standings shake up in about a month or two. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So lots to keep an eye on around the league. We'll continue following what various teams are doing. Uh, just looking at different results and how, you know, play between injuries and just matchups, how teams continue. We do have a break for the Philadelphia union this week. So we'll continue also unpacking how they're recovering. I know there's, we just saw the um, information about like this week's media schedule and press conference and stuff. So more to come your way here that we'll be updating you on. But for us here at PHLI Union Podcast, that'll do it for us. Uh, we are happy to say we are still talking about the lone undefeated team That's across right. the MLS. And let's hope that continues. A nice much-needed break before they continue to revamp through that makeup game's coming up soon. They've got the April 27th game versus RSL. So lots on the horizon for the Union and so for Tyler, JP, myself, Renee, have a marvelous rest of your Monday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure that you are hitting that thumbs up button on your way out the virtual doors. And we'll see you back for another live show next week and some more content as the week progresses here at PHLY Union. See you next time. Mm -hmm.